What's up guys? Welcome back to Diving Garage. In this video, we're going to pick up right where we left off in the last one, on our 350 small black Chevy build. We need to get the pistons and rods balanced and installed. Plenty of work to do, so let's dive in. Alright, so now that we have our crankshaft set in place, we can turn our attention to our piston and rod assemblies. So on a stock small block Chevrolet, the pistons use a pin that is press fit into the small end of the rod here. And there are a couple of different ways to remove it at home. You can use heat, you can use a shop press, you can get a hammer and smash it out, uh, but none of those are really recommended. The Probably the recommended and proper way is to send these off to a machine shop and have them press out the pistons or press out the pin to get the piston and rod separated. And then also when you do that, there you should bring your new pistons so they can press them on to the rods. And then also at that time, if you're going to upgrade to ARP hardware or anything like that, you'll need to have them resize the big end of your connecting rod here. So they're going to charge you to remove the pistons. They're going to charge you to put the new pistons in. And they're going to charge you to put the uh, or a machine the big end of the rod. So all that kind of adds up pretty quick. So well, let's go ahead and get these packed up. Okay, we have our piston and rod assemblies packed up. We got all the caps with the same rod they go with. Uh, we got the hardware in, uh, some old bearings, but they can take those away. So let's go ahead and send them off. Perfect. All right, so those pistons and rods are where they belong. And so now we can get onto the pistons and rods we'll actually be using in this build. I'm probably wondering, what the heck? Why did I just throw away some good pistons and rods? Well, time, money, you know, life. So what we'll be using instead are these summit connecting rods. And these are full floating rods. So the difference is that you don't have to press the pin through this. Uh, let me get this open here. You don't have to press the pin through this rod. You can slide the pin through and then use some retainers on the piston to assemble it yourself. So let's do that. Now again, we got these from Summit and they are pretty nice, I'll tell you what. There, but if you can see in there, there is a brass bushing in there. There you go, you can see a little better there. And uh, like I said, the pin will go straight through and we'll use a retainer on each side of the piston. And I'll show you those in just a second. And that way we can do this ourselves. Again, save us time, save us money. Um, could we reuse the old connecting rods? Yeah, we sure could. But again, this method will allow us to do it in our, in our garage on our own. And it's a lot faster. So nothing wrong with reusing rods if that's your choice. But those were just some stock Chevrolet rods and uh, these ones are advertised from Summit to uh, handle 475 horsepower if I remember the spec correctly and we're going to test that. All right, we got our rods all clean. Man, these things look great. Awesome, these uh, these joints from Summit here, they come with ARP hardware already. So that's great. 
So now we can start throwing some pistons together, right? <laughs> hold on, hold on. First, we need to get the pistons out of the box, cleaned and balanced. So let's get on that. All right, so here are the pistons we're gonna be using. So weight match set on the Speed Pro. And these are flat top pistons. So we're gonna bring our compression up a little bit. Not gonna go too crazy. We're shooting for uh, 10 to one. All right, so you've seen me open this box up for the first time. I didn't even peek at these. This is candy, right? Save. Okay, barrel shield cutting. All right, so let's take a look at these bad boys. Man, that's nice right there. And so since we didn't uh, overbore our block, we just went with the standard size, if you can see it there. Yep, standard size. Uh, obviously flat top, four valve reliefs, coated skirt. And this one has the uh, floating pin. So see if I can get you in there. Yep, right there. If you look right there, there is a little recess where you put a uh, lock. And I'll show you those in just a second. Uh, but now we need to check these. So it says weight match, right? But you always wanna double check. So we're gonna get our little scale out. We're gonna measure these, or we're gonna weigh these. We're gonna do a little bit of balancing. All right, so to balance your pistons, pretty easy setup. You're gonna need a scale that measures in grams, at least to a 10th, if not to a 100th. And uh, it's fairly simple. Uh, get yourself a marker out. I'm just gonna use a box to write down the weights. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna weigh them without the pin, because that's a separate weight we're gonna have to check. So once you get, get your uh, scale ready, make sure it's zeroed out. We are in grams. Let's see what we got. 534.3 grams, and we'll give it a cell. Another check, make sure it's correct. All right, then we're gonna write that down, 534.3. All right, I'll go ahead and measure out the weights for all the rest of the pistons, and we'll see where we're at. All right, he also went ahead and weighed out the pins, and so you'll see the numbers there. Uh, looks like the one we're gonna match to is this 680.6. We got a couple heavy ones, a couple of lighter ones, but overall, not too bad. Uh, another thing you could do here is if you have maybe say a really heavy one and really light one, you could take a look at the pin weights and see if maybe you could swap the pins just to even out the numbers a little bit before you get to grinding and cutting. So uh, this, this will help determine if we need to either get out the Dremel or the Sawzall, right? All right, the sequence of balancing is pretty straightforward. Uh, you identify the piston and or pin that you need to remove material from. And I'm gonna go ahead and use a Dremel with a, just a little grinding stone. And uh, see if I can get you in here. What I'm gonna do is remove material from this section here, just a little bit, a little bit there. And uh, we're gonna do one or two passes and we'll weigh it again to check to see how much of effect we're having as we're grinding. So here we go.
All right, this one here seems to be the ticket. Working pretty well. And we're just taking off, there's a pad here. It looks like a good spot to remove some material, so we're gonna go with that. All right, now it's time for the real fun stuff. So what we're gonna be doing now is we're gonna be fall fitting our rings. And in this case, we're using a set of Seal Power E251K. And these is a, this is a steel top ring set. Let's see what we got. Nice, tells you where they go. Second, third, top. And another third. Put those aside. All right, so most of your grinding is gonna happen here on the top and second groove, top and second rings. Uh, you also need a ring grinder. In this case, this was, I believe, a uh, pro form from Summit, uh, which would do the job. They sell all different kinds and flavors of these. Uh, essentially, all you really need is a surface to put this on, and then you'll, you'll put your ring there, and you always wanna go from the outside, the outside of the ring in. So basically reverse. So let's go ahead and unpack these top rings. And you can either use a special tool to fit the rings in the block to measure them up, or you can use a piston and that's what we're gonna be doing. But one more tool we're gonna to need. We're gonna need a set of feeler gauges. All right, so um, after that, you're gonna need, gonna need to follow the manufacturer's instructions for the right ring gap. You can't just slap these in there and fire away because uh, what will happen is this ring, when you put it in the cylinder, it will compress and you want the right amount of compression because if it compresses too much, what will happen is it will compress and then it'll bend up like that, destroys your piston, bad day. Anyway, so let's go set these in the block. Let's see where we're starting at and let's see where we want to end up. All right, first step to check a gap on your ring. Just go ahead and set it down in the cylinder bore. Pinch it together a little bit. Let's gently get it started. Then go grab your piston that's for this cylinder. All right, and then what we're gonna, since we're using the piston, what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, set this inside the bore until just this top surface here is showing. And you're just gently pushing down the ring. All right. And now that we've used the piston to make sure the ring is square, let's go ahead and measure that. Let's start out. Let's go ahead and start out with a, let's see, we got a 25 thousandths in here. Yep. Hiding in there in the back. All right, so what we're going for here is this is your, your ring. You want to come in the middle and just gently glide up like that. You don't want to jam it down because then you'll push the ring down and it'll get out of alignment. So let's see if this one fits. All right, so that one is pretty snug. I couldn't quite get it in there. Let's see if we got a 22. Oh, well maybe not. Let's try that 25 again. There we go. 25 fits pretty decent. There you go. I just wasn't looking at it right. All right, so what you're looking for is you want to check and see if it gives you tension towards the, I guess the front or the back of the ring. That would indicate your rings aren't square, maybe like this or like that. 
And uh, that's something you're definitely going to want to make sure you file out, make sure they're nice and flat. So let's go ahead and double check. A 25 fits, but it's, it's a touch loose. Let me see if we have a two. We got a 2000s in here. Yeah, we do right here. All right, so let's try this. This will be 27,000s. When you stack them together, just, just pinch them. All right, so that one's tough. I can force it in there, but I'm probably moving the ring. We're going to call that one 26,000s. So at this point, uh, on this ring, I don't think we need to do anything. We got lucky. But what you would do here in the, in the case you do need to remove some material is take the ring out. Just kind of slide it out gently. And then take it over to your ring grinder. And uh, I'll show you the motions so you can see it. Then what you do next, get your ring filer, get your ring, slide it in there. There's two posts that help you locate it. Get in position, and we only need to remove material from one side. So I'm going to rotate it. Well, only one side is touching your wheel there. Make sure it uh, looks decently flat. And at this point, it'd be, it's easier if you have this in a vise or attached to your bench. But then at this point, what you do is, again, we're going for that backwards motion here like this. I'm not really going to do it much because this one seems to be good to go. But anyway, as you can see, it already, as you can see, it already sort of started getting material away. It's already shiny. But anyway, that's what you would do. Pretty straightforward. I'll go ahead and knock these out, and then we'll get them on the pistons. Alrighty, so we got all the rings filed down, gapped them correctly, we got the rods ready, everything's clean. We got some paper down to make sure we got a clean working surface. Oh, and these are the um, piston pin retainers, by the way. Pretty sweet little joints. Um, all right, so I mean, nothing to it but to do it. So let's start assembling pistons and rods.
All right. Well, got them done. Pistons and rods assembled. Now, what do we have to do is put them in the engine. Let's do it. Well guys, we got it done. Rotating assembly, officially together. This thing looks sweet, I'm so pumped. Now we start looking ahead to cam, heads, getting this thing fired up. So hey, you saw me do it, now get out there and dive in your next project.